This session is about the subject economics for class 12 for both arts and commerce stream. So the topic which we are going to discuss today is circular flow of income. So it comes under chapter 2 and I should say this chapter is very simple and very short. So I will try to complete and discuss all the important points in just one shot. That is in just one video I will try to complete the whole chapter. So let's start, let's begin. So the topic that we are going to discuss today is circular flow of income. So let us first go through the meaning of circular flow of income. Circular flow of income refers to continuous circular flow of goods, services, and money among different sectors of economy. So we have four sectors of economy. I will come back to this. But first let us simplify the meaning of circular flow of income. So when we talk about circular flow of income, when we talk about this word circular, basically when, we, when do we use the word circular? We use the word circular when we have a, a fixed pattern of mechanism, which when we have a fixed mechanism that keeps on going, right? For example, let's say we have a starting point out here again. We after some like, uh, after some time, or we can say after some activities, again we come back to this point. Again we come back to this point. So this type of mechanism is known as circular, right? And this mechanism keeps on going. So circular flow of income under this basically we are going to discuss how how in an economy how in an economy how in an economy goods services and money flows how in an economy goods services and money flows that we are going to discuss under circular flow of income here the words flow here the word flow basically refers to refers to the measurement or we can yeah the, we can say the measurement of quantities or variables over a period of time see when you go back to chapter uh, one when you go back to chapter one you have one topic flow okay uh, stock and flow there will be uh, one heading that is stock and flow under that you can uh, clarify the meaning of flow so but i'm just telling you the simple definitions flow basically refers to measurement of any quantities over a period of time that means we are measuring a quantity of goods over a period of time that means not uh, at a specific point of time even services and money all these are measured over a period of time over a period of time maybe it can be one year it can be uh, it can be uh, months it can be weeks but we are taking period of time not a, a specific time specific time refers to like um, let's say 5 p.m. or we can say 26 March or 11th June. So this type of measurement, we, when we measure goods or services at a specific point of time, that becomes stock. But here we are talking, we are using the word flow because we are measuring flow or we are measuring these goods, services and money over a period of time. So circular under circular flow of income, basically we are going to discuss like how goods, services and money flows, flows in an economy. So the whole economy, okay, the whole economy, the whole economy has been divided into four parts. The whole economy has been divided into four parts. Now what this economy means? Economy means the sum total of all economic activities. The sum total of all economic activities is an economy. So we are dividing the whole economy in four parts that means or uh, four sectors i should say so the first sector is the household sector that is uh, household sector is the first sector uh, which is uh, which i should say the owner of factors of production that will that that will discuss later on the first sector is household sector the second sector is uh, production sector that means where the goods and services are produced the third sector is government sector and the fourth sector is rest of the world rest of the world means see we know that after globalization so we we interact with other countries as well right we have import export yes or no so the uh, the fourth sector is known as foreign sector or we can say rest of the world so the whole economy whole economy is divided into four sectors household sector production sector government sector and foreign sector okay but but under our syllabus under our syllabus we have been we have been limited to the study of we have been limited to the study of only two sectors we have been limited to the study of only two sectors that is household sectors and production sector we are going to focus only in those in these two sectors okay now let us for let us know some terms that we need to understand to get a proper knowledge of circular flow of income see we in class 11 we have learned about factors of production 
factors of production means what what does factors of production means like in order to produce something in order to produce something we need some we need some inputs right without inputs we cannot produce um, any product or any goods or services for example i want to produce um, some edible things right so i need some input yes or no i need some inputs and those inputs are land i need land see here here the land land refers doesn't refers to only the space that is available okay we, it refers to all the natural resources which is available in the land or underneath the land okay so it refers it it has a broader term not only uh, about the space we are talking about out here we are talking about the all the natural resources that is available on land or underneath the land okay so uh, what what are the inputs that we need to produce something we need land that's for sure which covers natural resources and then we need labor because without without human resources we we can only produce goods and services using Mm, art, uh, not artificial but we can say natural resources but we need human resources as well right so we need labor we need land we need labor and then we need capital 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 here refers to actually mm, it refers to money okay capital refers to money but money is not directly used for production money is not directly used for production so money is converted into money is converted into machines machines and tools okay money is converted into machines and tools so in books you might see capital as machines and tools but primary capital means money and then with those money we use to purchase machines tools which is needed to produce okay so capital which is very important and then entrepreneurship entrepreneurship basically refers to a uh, process of process of bringing all this together the process of bringing all this together that means we need some person right we need some entrepreneurs we need some entrepreneurs who will who will manage all will bring all this uh, all these other factors of production will enga uh, engage all these other factors of production in producing something so these are the major f uh, factors of production these are the four factors of production it's very important point in economics most of the topic we use this term factors of production so you need to remember in order to produce something we in order to produce something we need input right we need input and those four major inputs are land labor capital and entrepreneurship or we can also say entrepreneurs or enterprise okay so now the uh, who are the owners of these factors of production? Who are the owners? This out of these four sectors, out of these four sectors, who are the owners? The owners of factor of productions are household sector. Remember this one: the owners of factors of production are household sector. Household sector are the owners of this one. Okay, because um, labor you'll get from household capital, you get from household land. Even land is acquired by household sectors, and even to engage or to bring all the activities together we need entrepreneurs which we get from household sector only right so owners of factors of productions are household sector so next what we need to know is that principles of circular flow of income principles of circular flow of income as of now we have just seen as of now we have just seen the meaning of circular flow of income and these factors of production and owners of factors of production these factors of production are not mentioned in the textbook but we need but these words means i mean to say the me, uh, meaning of this land labor capital and entrepreneurship are not mentioned because we have learned in class 11 but they have used this term that's why i've explained this four uh, meaning of these four terms and then owners of factors of production is household sector so next Next, next we have principles of principles of uh, principles of circular flow of income. So principle means basically some laws. Okay, there are some laws which we use while um, learning the concept of circular flow of income. See, the first principle is any in any exchange process. Exchange exchange refers to a, a flow a flow of not flowing flow of goods and services from one sector to other sector right so in any exchange process the seller the seller or we can say the producer who produces the goods receives the same amount which the buyer spends See, very simple to understand i think I, it's not necessary to uh, explain this one in any exchange process that means how much will be the price of the or how much will be the uh, price of the product that much will be paid by the buyer right it means uh, the seller will get the same amount which the buyer pays yes or not the seller will get the same amount which the buyer pays so this is the first uh, point uh, first principle i should say the next principle is goods and services flow in one direction goods and services flow in one direction and the money payment to acquire them and the money payment to acquire them flows in the reverse direction so uh, for example there is one person he is a producer he is a producer and then he sells goods and services and there is one person who is a consumer right who consumes goods and services so it is person is selling goods and services to this person now this person need to pay right this person need to pay 
for acquiring those goods and services so the, the that means the payment will be in reverse direction see the goods and services are flowing in this direction right and the uh, payment is flowing in, in this direction so this is what the second principle talks about and this this is a fact okay this is a law that we use uh, in our daily life as well so the principles of uh, there are two principles of circular flow of income the first uh, principle is in any exchange process the seller the seller receives the same amount which the buyer spends right which the buyer spends and the second is goods and services flow in one direction and money to acquire them flows in reverse direction okay so these are the two principles which you need to remember uh, this top uh, these points are clearly mentioned in the textbook as well so you can go through the next topic that we need to know is okay i think i have written out here okay so now we will see in the beginning itself in the meaning while well, uh, explaining the meaning circular flow of income refers to continuous circular flow of goods services and money among different sectors of economy right among different sectors of economy so we study circular flow of income among different sectors of economy but but in our syllabus we are limited to only two sector of economy that is household sector and production sector so now we are going to go to the point that is circular flow of income under household sector or we can say circular flow of income within household sector and production sector so this is the point that we're going to discuss now so while learning this or while discussing this circular flow of income in two sector economy that is household sector and firm sector or production sector we can say we need to we need to assume certain points we need to assume certain points and those points are see in economics we have many assumptions okay whenever we study some topic we first uh, make some assumptions because without assumptions uh, those theories fail okay Th those theories fail so first we need to make some assumptions and then we start learning about a topic so the assumptions out here under this topic the assumptions out here are there is no government it's simple to understand because we are learning about only two sector economy so there will be no government only household sector and production sector so we're assuming there is no government we're assuming okay it's not that there is no government we're assuming it the economy is a closed economy the economy is a closed economy this means that this means that we are not in we are not interacting with rest of world we are not interacting with rest of world that is there is no import and export there is no import and export is we are assuming that we are assuming that the third point is no saving by the households no saving by the household that is that is how much they earn how much they earn the households that is the household how much they earn they are spending they're spending it all without saving they're spending it all without spending or uh, without saving so we can say um, full income is used for purchasing okay full income is used for purchasing it means whatever they earn they are using it full for purchasing purchasing goods and services or acquiring goods the next point the next point is no investment by the firms that means they are uh, producing whatever is demanded they are producing whatever is demanded that is they are fulfilling all the demands of the all the demands of the households without making any additional investment to other sectors without aiming any uh, doing any additional investment for other activities or uh, any other purpose so there are, there is no investment by the firm so these are the four assumptions that we need to we need to carry with us while understanding circular flow of income in two sector economy if we don't consider these assumptions then we will fail to understand the circular flow of income in two sector economy okay so let's start the circular flow of income in two sector economy we have discussed about the assumptions now we'll discuss about the main topic that is the main topic of this chapter that is circular flow of income in two sector economy very simple to understand see we are discussing only, only two sectors right this we have household sectors and we have production sectors so in the starting in the starting i have discussed or i've told you that the owners the owners of factors of production the owners of factors of productions are household sector that is the owners of factor of productions are household sector see now this production sector this production sector if they want to produce if they want to produce something if they want to produce something they need land labor capital and enterprise or we can say someone who will manage all these other factors of production so uh, from where they are going to hire these services from where they are going to hire these services they are going to hire this service from the owner right o the, from the owner of this land labor capital and enterprise so the who are the owners of factors of production who is the owner of factors of production household sector is the owner of factors of production so production sector will hire from household sector that is 
I'm using this direction. I'm using this direction to show that the factor services, the factor services that is factor services means land, labor, capital, enterprise is moving from household sector to is moving from household sector to production sector. I can say it's flowing from household sector to production sector because this production sector are going to produce something and they need factors of production because without factors of production, they cannot produce. So they are hiring goods or they are hiring factor services from household sector. So as of now, the phase one factor services flows from flows from household sector to production sector. And this flow and this flow is known as rail flow. And this flow is known as rail flow. Side by side, I will be uh, discussing about this topic as well. Rail flow and money flow. Rail flow and money flow. Money flow it's also a topic under this chapter. Okay, so rail flow basically means rail flow basically means flow of goods and services flow of goods and services no money is not considered out here okay money is not considered out here just we are discussing about goods and services flow of good uh, goods and services so as of now it's just the flow of goods and services right goods means like uh, land resources and all services will be from labor capital and enterprise right so rail flow uh, refers to flow of goods and services so out here what which what type of flow is mm, carried out rail flow okay the second phase the second phase after hiring now the now the production sector has hired now the production sector has hired factor services so are they going to hire it for free or are our household sectors going to lend these services for free not at all right they are not going to lend these services for free they are going to charge something they are going to charge something from for land for providing land they are going to charge something for providing the labor services for providing capital for providing enterprise or entrepreneurs so they this se production sector need to pay something to for hiring this one so what are they paying they are paying they are paying factor payments they are paying factor payments that means now the flow if the flow is from production sector to household sector the first flow was from household sector to production sector factor services and because production sector hired all these services and then for hiring these services they need to pay something right the production sector need to pay to the owners and who are the owners of these factor services the owner of these factor services is household sector though they are paying um, factor payments to household sector for land they are paying rent for labor they are paying wages for capital they are paying interest and for enterprise that is uh, the profit uh, the profits will be paid back to household sector because they are managing that one right the entrepreneurs comes from household sector only so profits will be again it will go back to household sector so this flow this flow now this flow i'm not talking about the factor services the flow of factor services i've discussed about this now i'm talking about the flow of factor payments okay the flow of factor payments now this flow is known as money flow this flow is known as money flow so side by side i'm giving you the meaning of rail flow and money flow money flow refers to flow of money money flow refers to flow of money that means when money flows from one sector to other sector that is known as flow of money okay this is known as money flow but in the first phase in the first phase it was just flow of goods and services right there's no money involved out here you are providing land you are providing labor you are providing capital capital see don't get confused i told you right capital is not directly used for production capital is converted into machines and tools capitals are converted into machines and tools so here the flow is rail flow in the phase one there is rail flow and the second phase it's money flow okay flow of money now so we have discussed with two phase factor services flow um it went from household sector to production sector and then production sector for hiring these services they paid something right now the next thing is that see now production sector will produce something they will produce anything produce something goods or services anything now these household sectors these household sectors to survive to survive what they need they need they need goods and services right so from where they're going to purchase this one from where they are going to get these goods and services again from the production sector like those who will produce from there itself they will get the these uh, goods and services so for consumption pur purpose for consumption purpose this household sector sector again will spend will spend whatever they have earned see in the second phase they have earned something right because they have provided uh, they have provided factor services so now again they are going to spend that one to consume goods and services they need goods right they need goods for living they need goods for proper function of the life right and then services services out here means for example banking services any services so household sector again they will spend those money which they have uh, earn from production sector again they're going to send back that money to production sector for acquiring goods and services so this is the f uh, this is the third phase and this phase is known as this phase is also known as 
money flow this phase is also known as money flow because there is flow of money right because the household sectors are going to pay something to going to pay something to acquire the goods and services now in the third in the last stage in the last stage what it will happen the the household sectors are paying something right to uh, they are paying something to for acquiring goods and services so the production sector they will send back the goods and services that means for example the household sectors are purchasing bread that means the production sector will give them bread right e example household sectors are pro uh, purchasing the services of banking then this production sector will provide the service of banking that means they are providing whatever they are producing to the household sector and this phase and this phase that is the flow of goods and services is also is not also is rail flow right the earlier earlier one was money flow and this is rail flow. the thing goes there is no involvement of money there's this flow of goods and services they receive the money they receive the money from uh, household sector and then this money uh, for that income or money they have received they are providing goods and services okay so again this cycle again this cycle re repeat because again these goods and services will flow out here again this production sector got some income right got some income again from this income they will produce again goods and services again also sector will purchase those goods and services so this this cycle will keep on repeating this cycle will keep on repeating so it, this is all actually known as circular flow of income i hope you uh, understood the concept behind circular flow of income it basically refers to the flow of goods and services and money not goods and services only as well as money as well right so now in short if we discuss circular flow of income we can say in short we can say income is first generated by production unit that is what does this mean that means income is generated by production unit because if this production sector does not use these factor services if this production sector does not use these factor services that means this household sector will not get any income right the household sector will not get any income the production sector need to use these factor services and for that factor services they are paying something that means income is actually generated in production sector income is generated in production sector because production sector provides rent for land production uh, sector provides wages for using the service of labor production sector uh, provides interest for using capital production sector provides profit back to the household sector right so in short income is first generated by production units then distributed among household that means again they send this to household again they send this to household because because who are the owners of factory services the owners of factory services are are household sectors so mm, in, in short, income is first generated by production units, then distributed among households for rendering productive services and ultimately comes back to production. Again, it comes back to our production unit because, again, household needs goods and services for survival or to satisfy their wants and needs. So, again, that money will again flow back to production sector right so productive services are ultimately comes back to production units by way of consumption expenditure on goods and services by households in this way there is a circular flow of income that means the income keeps on flowing right so i hope um, with this discussion you will be able to understand the meaning of circular flow of income try to watch uh, at least if you get time at least uh, twice so that you'll get a proper idea and then you need to go through the textbook as well you need to go through the textbook and then when you go through the textbook you'll get all all this discussion that i've made out here in the textbook itself so it will be much more clear when you go through the textbook okay thank you